Have you ever thought about a lifestyle change? Maybe upsizing, downsizing, or moving into a caravan or a mobile home, or even moving into another country, or perhaps, just perhaps, you have thought about moving onto a narrowboat. Welcome to the Lifestyle Change Part 2 of Peter's journey on the narrowboat. Last week we covered the thought processes and decisions that Peter had to make in order to become a full-time narrowboater. And this week we're talking about what he did to the interior of the boat to make it comfortable for him to live on. And also what uh, stages he went through to actually move onto the boat with a cat. That might be of interest to some of you. So Peter, <laughs> what did you have to do in order to move on board and then to bring Flan on board? Right, well the first thing is once the boat was legally mined, mm -hmm. then um, if you remember we went up and went to the nearest marina and filled the tank with diesel ready to move. I was a bit surprised to find it was only quarter full, um, which was more a problem later. <laughs> Made the voyage of Peter's boat going out of Crick Wharf to get some diesel. And I'm just perched on the edge here, hoping that I'm not going to fall over or off the boat. Okay, so we're going a bit further along. It's snowing, it's cold. Are we turning in this one? Nope. Don't think so. Um, and then uh, we, on that trip or another trip, we actually took some things and placed them in the cupboards. Um, in the meantime, back home, there was a big uh, clearing up going on. And then uh, we arranged a date to pick the boat up. Mm -hmm. It was delayed a week, I remember, because there was ice in the in the marina. Um, but we set the date for 21st of March, uh, the Wednesday. So Simon, my son, came over from Prague and stayed at the house for, for 10 days. Why did he have to do that? Well, he was clearing all his stuff up because he'd been living in the house and the, there was one room that was had lots of his stuff laid out mm -hmm. and that all had to be packed away, ready to let the house. And, um, and also to look after Flan because I didn't want to be dealing with a new boat and also dealing with a cat in a completely new world at the same time. I think that would have been quite nerve wracking to do. I wouldn't have liked to have done it. Then on the day, uh, I packed a case and took the train up to Rugby, got a taxi to the, the boatyard. Uh, there was a bit of a delay because the day before they told me the water pump had failed. So they fitted a new pump and the, the chap who did the work there was cash only. So I had to rush off to the post office in the village and get some cash out. And you didn't have a car at that point. You went to the boat on the train on that occasion yes. because obviously yeah. you were going to take the boat and start cruising. Yes, and we filled the water tank up for the first time. Uh, and I discovered then that the hose that was on board for filling the, the water tank was barely the length of the boat. <laughs> so if I couldn't get the boat into the water point the right way around, it was going to be tight. So I decided right away that I needed a new hose. Okay. Um, set off uh, in mid-afternoon and went down through the Crick Tunnel to the top of the Watford flight of locks just by Watford services on the M1 and broke down <laughs> so uh, that was it for the next but how long next 24 hours oh my word so yes. that must have been quite nerve-wracking for you really because you would only just taken possession of the boat 
you hadn't found out all its intricacies and little funny ways and yeah. here you are broken down and also being March the evenings were not that bright at that time were no they? it got dark very quickly around about five o'clock mm. um, and there weren't many people around but as luck would have it I mean talk about <laughs> long odds um, I was sitting on the water point there and a lock landing with the engine stopped and I had the engine decks up and a boat came down it was a holiday boat and there was an Australian couple on there and this chap was a, um, a mechanic <laughs> so he said well I haven't got my toolbox but I'll have a look for you if you like and he said yes looks like you've got contaminated fuel here there's water in it okay. uh, he ran off some water he showed me how to take water off from a valve that's supposed to separate the water out from the fuel right. um, but but the the bowl was full of water um, and he also told me how to go on and the, but then I just had to sit there all uh, most of the next day and the river and canal rescue engineer turned up in the afternoon put new filters in um, also gave me some advice on looking after the tank until we could get it flushed and can you tell us and tell our audience mm. why you've had to wait 24 hours before the canal and river trust would even consider coming out to you yes there was a slight confusion there because part of the deal and this is quite common um, part of the deal with the uh, the boat uh, sale the boat brokers is that um, you got three months free membership as part of dealing with them but it hadn't been fully set up I can't remember whose fault that was it might actually have been mine I might not have responded to something but uh, I phoned them in the evening and then there was I had a discussion with RCR and they they said yes it's all sorted out um, but we can't send an engineer out after dark so we had to wait till the next day and fit into the the schedule there so right. that that's why since well, when I've had to call them out since they've been they've turned up much faster than that <laughs> so a tip for you if you decide to buy a boat and you are cruising out of the boat yard that you buy it from mm. is to just double check that if you have been told you have the cover for Canal and River Trust, uh, Canal and River Rescue, that is actually in place in full, just in case you too get diesel bug on your way out of the marina. Yes. Heaven forbid, wouldn't wish it on you. Yeah, technically we, we didn't have the bug, thank, thankfully, but it was water. Oh, I see. Because, okay. And that's why it was significant, because the tank was only quarter full through the winter, it's likely that condensation got mm -hmm. inside the tank and then the water drops to the bottom and it comes right. through the fuel line and there is a filter there to deal with it and so for the first few months every day or so uh, or two days I would uh, drain off a little fuel from that bowl and mm. there would be water in it but gradually that went away and I put um, fuel conditioner in when I filled up uh, and in fact the fuel boat that, that filled me up this morning Actually, I know that they put fuel conditioner in uh, as part of their service. Okay. So I don't have to bother, and uh, and it means that yeah, I just don't have to worry about it now. I did have the tank flushed. We got a lot of uh, gloopy stuff out of the bottom, um, but that was even after having the boat surveyed. So they can't check, or, the, or they don't check. Mm. the condition of the fuel for you so that's something to think about so it's useful to know the immediate history of the boat and what I suspect and nobody told me for sure but I suspect the reason the boat had a new stove was that someone was interested in buying it had a survey found the stove was cracked and there was a leak in the bathroom so they backed out um, the boat was then still available I thought I'd seen it before and I thought maybe it had, it had gone, but uh, it, that's why it had a new stove and a new bathroom floor. Right, okay. Um, but also, that's probably why it had water in the fuel. <laughs> okay, so you've picked up your boat, you're merrily cruising along, you break down, you get fixed, and then you start cruising again. Yes. 
Now, I remember moving in day and I brought Peter to the boat in my car, which is an estate car, piled high with things that he would want initially. And we did move it on over um, across gangplanks and other people's boats in the marina because it wasn't moored anywhere that was convenient to, moor, uh, to load up. So I remember all of that. Oh, yes. 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 Yeah. And it was getting dark. And at that point, we were just putting the things into the boat and locking up and walking away. And then I brought, oh no, and then Peter came up on the train after that. However, Flan didn't come with him. And you mentioned in last week's video, I'll put a link at the end so that you can watch it, hmm. that you had to, uh, quite a gruelling schedule down the Grand Union from March through yes. to Easter. Yeah. But in that time frame, um, we had to actually move Flan. Did we move Flan on board then? Not until the first part. Um, I mean, what, what happened was I was a bit too ambitious with how much distance I could cover. Okay. Um, it was hard work. I, I, I know one, one day in particular, I mean, I, I had difficulty with a swing bridge you know the one I mean yes <laughs> um, I've kind of figured it out now but it is tricky to get around if you're on your own uh, mm -hmm. and I, I got to a point about two o'clock in the afternoon it'd been raining since I got up and it was cold and there was a cafe there and I thought <laughs> I'm just going to pull over and go inside and get warm and have something to eat and, and it, then I didn't move the rest of the day um, and then the next day I met a, a really enthusiastic holiday family who were experienced boaters and we went down through 34 locks that day, which is the most I've ever done in a day. But that was with help? Oh, yes, they were. They had a bicycle, they were cycling ahead and setting locks, and uh, but it didn't stop raining the whole time. I was absolutely soaked at the end of it. Um, so I realised I wasn't going to get down onto the Basingstoke Canal before my son had to fly back to Prague. So yes. I got to Rickmansworth and with great good luck I found a mooring just opposite the supermarket there. Pulled in and you came to get me yes. and we locked the boat up for a week. It's the only time I've done that. Locked it up for a week, went back to the house. Because it was Easter, Easter time. Yes, yeah. So, yes. and then we uh, we packed everything up um, uh, and Flan as well, put him in the car in his traveling case. Yes. And I moved the boat over to the landing by the supermarket so we could use their car park. Yes. And loaded everything on and removed the, the two armchairs, which were a single sofa beds that were on the boat already. Yes. Um, they they just took up too much space as far as I was concerned, and we didn't need extra beds. No. So. Um, so they, they had to go. Yeah. Now we took them out of the uh, the boat. They managed to fit through the doorway of the boat, and they fit into my car and totally blocked my vision. And I was intending to go back home and take them to my local tip, but however. On leaving the Aquadrome at Rickmansworth, I drove round the corner and I saw signs for the recycling centre there, much to my good fortune. So I pulled in there and the very kind gentleman over there helped me out with these two sofa armchairs. And I said they are in good condition or saleable if you can sell them, that'd be great. And they put them into a special container to sell on to somebody else. So these armchairs that were on the boat originally, they might actually be still serving their purpose in someone else's home. I do hope so, because I don't like waste. And then yeah. that meant I could see out of my rear window all the way home again. And that was what I was worried about. So very interesting journey, that little bit there. Yes, yes. In, and I, I spent the weekend, we arrived back on a Friday. Uh, I spent the weekend in situ letting Flan get used to the feel of the boat uh, and then on the Monday morning we we set off again south. So. Yes can I just mention something here yeah. we, we took Flan out of the car left him in his carry case while we emptied the car 
and I fully anticipated that Peter would let Flan out inside the boat once the doors were locked and not let him out. And that didn't really happen, I don't think. You, you took him into the boat and opened it, but he didn't stay in for very long and he was wandering up and down the boat and into the well deck and everything. Um, I think yeah. before I even left you. And yeah. there's been quite a lot of interest about cats on narrowboats and they're very adaptable, I find. And mm. we'll, we'll talk more about Flan and how he has fared on the boat. But, so that was, yes. mo that was moving in day with all, the, all of your possessions. Yes. Can you now talk about what we actually mm. moved onto the boat? The things that you brought from home to make yes. the boat feel like home. Right. Well, there there were the practical things like um, all the uh, well pots and pans, uh, the microwave, my Nespresso coffee machine, um, and yeah, the usual things you would expect. But the one of the things I wanted on the boat was a, 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 an open space in the living area so that we could put our own furniture in, and I bought a leather reclining armchair and footstool. Um, they're very popular on boats actually, L lots of boats have them uh, and because they're quite compact uh, but I also brought the ottoman from my three-piece suite at home which is about a meter wide and fully upholstered and has storage inside but with some very big cushions against the back it's made a neat little sofa so we've got uh, an armchair a sofa that seats too comfortably and a footstool that doubles as an extra seat mm -hmm. um, so that was that was for the beginning and I also brought a few things of mine like um, well actually three statues <laughs> two two small clay figurines and a l large stone statue that's uh, from originally from Zimbabwe and um, that's uh, <laughs> That's made its mark on the floor. <laughs> yes, it has. And I'll show you the marks it's made. Um, you also bought some artwork with you. Oh yes, that's right. I I had um, I had a picture, which I, I had bought a few years before that I, I liked very much. It was in my living room, so we found a place for that. It fits perfectly in the bedroom on the wall there, but it's actually by a Basingstoke artist called Athita Kerr. Uh, who has sadly since passed away. There's the little uh, fig um, painting on silk that I bought in India when I, I went travelling there oh, some time ago now. Yes. <laughs> and that's framed and that's hanging up as well. So. Was there anything else that you brought with you to make yourself more comfortable on the boat? Uh, gosh, I should have thought this through, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. I think actually the certain other things that you you did bring onto the boat later you were looking for things like additional cushions and throws and well yes and gradually we added rugs uh, and because it's got uh, wooden paneling uh, which has been laid on the original floor okay um, the sort of thing that you know you could put down in in, in, in a house mm. uh, and uh, that that looks very look, you know, looks very nice but it looks better with a few rugs scattered around and we gradually added those over the next year really yeah it's a case of looking mm. around and when you saw something that would fit then uh, that, that would look right then we bought it the curtains looked a bit well a bit, bit yeah not my style anyway little little pelmets there there were even little pelmets on the round portholes and I, I just removed those all together uh, and they look a lot better, I, I think, for yes. not having that. Um, the interior of the boat is uh, apparently it's typical of the builder, uh, John White, who's no longer in business, unfortunately, in that they use this mixture of light wood and dark wood, which you would have seen in the background of the previous video. Uh, and that looks very nice. And they, they had dark wood strips at the bottom of the windows to hold the curtains in place. Um, so we got rid of the curtains, but we managed to keep though the um, the rails because uh, but the way we've got it set now uh, works perfectly with those rails. Yes, 
and would you like to mention at this point what you did replace the curtains with? We went to Ikea and found some double line, double blinds in a kind of a honeycomb shape uh, and amazingly the off-the-shelf sizes were perfect. Um, they, I got four for the for the windows and one for the the front doors yes. and um, they're great for the boat because you they pull down there's no cords they we did have a blind on the front doors and there was a plastic cord which had to be hooked to stop, to stop it swinging <laughs> about and uh, getting rid of all of those was great and now I just put my finger on the edge pull it down and for as far as I want and then let it go uh, and if I put it all the way down it just clips into the 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 rail that originally held the curtain in place. Yeah, so the boat lines inside are much neater now. Mm. The pelmets are still there, the wooden pelmets, uh, well not the fabric but the wood is and that is what the blinds have fitted to so it was all meant to be really I think. <laughs> it, it was really easy, I mean we, we ordered the the, the blinds and, and it took me an hour to put them all up I think it was yes. it was ridiculously simple uh, and yeah. that, that just set off our um, new windows that's right <laughs> well that will be in a future video talk we'll talk about the windows yeah. um, the other thing of course was that you cannot have a boat without wine glasses and if you look back through my videos and watch my um, Christmas gift ideas you will see that we have some rather nice um, wide based very delicate though wine glasses on board mm. and that's very um, very good for our comfort on the boat I find <laughs> yes yeah you're right there yeah, I'm just gonna fidget a bit I hope I'm not too tall for the camera well now. I hope not yes. so um, I think that just about covers everything that you brought on what did you bring on for Flan's comfort just out of interest well for for familiarity I brought um, cushion I had a little cat bed which um, he shows no interest in whatsoever um, the cushion itself is in use at the moment uh, and he well, with uh, a litter tray with with a lid which um, originally I had inside the boat uh, because there wasn't a cat flap so when when I was traveling he had to be shut in mm. um, I've since made a hole in the door which I, I bought a cat flap and then didn't fit it because it was it looked too big to go in the door and I cut a hole that he can comfortably get through and um, and then Marianne hang, hung a toweling curtain over it. I will show you that <laughs> it's very interesting it was supposed to be temporary the way we've affixed it to the door it's been like that for three years it's come off I it's think just, twice and we just so stuck well. it. And the one of the unexpected benefits of it is when he goes through from the inside the curtain then hangs at the bottom outside the door so I can tell at a glance if he's in or out <laughs> because of course he can make his way on and off the boat when we're moored and yeah. then I discovered that the the litter tray would fit on the outside of the door yeah. so when we're traveling yesterday I went to get some water so I closed the doors put the litter tray up against the door so he can step through into the litter tray use it and then step back into the boat and he does <laughs> you know frequently uh, when, when uh, we're traveling all day long yes. so it keeps any mess and smell out of the boat itself and the litter tray also is a handy seat so we've um, we've had fold back flaps fitted to this new crack yes that went outside and then I realised that for cats the problem with the boat is um, the windows are quite high up uh, in the sides so they can't see out very well. Um, he can sit out on the well deck now and look out through the window here but uh, I, uh, we, we got a box and then placed a wooden tray on top of it, put a blanket in there uh, and put it on the dinette table so he can sit up there and look out of the window as much as he likes. Yes. Um, and he has to understand that when we're having dinner, he, sit, he can sit in the box, but he can't get out onto the table. <laughs> yes, we're still training him with that. Three years on, he hasn't learned. Yeah, another know. eight or nine years would do it. Yes. Probably, yeah. <laughs> but Flan can 
get on and off the boat quite happily because of the construction of the, the cratch. Tony, the cratch builder, um, put in, he actually suggested putting in little turn backs on the cratch cover with little latches so that uh, we could pin it back at, on the towpath side and Flan could go in. And this is one of the things that we do when we're cruising. Uh, whichever side is towpath, the litter tray goes on that side and the flap gets pinned back and the other side gets pulled down and firmly zipped and he doesn't have access to that side. We learned very early on when Flan had a little dip in yes. the canal, but we'll tell you about that another time. <laughs> yes, an unfortunate uh, set of circumstances there. I could see why he made that mistake. But, yes, but we will talk about that another time. So that's making the boat comfortable for Peter. And you forgot to mention the scratch post. Oh, of course, yes. <laughs> I had uh, two scratch posts in the house, one short one and one tall one. And I thought I might bring the short one on the boat. But uh, when I had them uh, out in the hallway, ready to get rid of the big one, um, he got so, he was, he was giving so much attention to the big one. And I thought, yeah, he does like to reach up. So we've got, actually we've got a replacement of the big one there because the old one was completely shredded. <laughs> Uh, and uh, just a little piece of wood on the top with a cork hanging on a string. Nice yes. And uh, he, it's late evening, you know, when cats have their mad moment, he'll come in and he'll get behind the, the scratching post with his back against the wall and bat the cork around like playing swing ball. <laughs> <clears throat> it's quite fascinating to watch, actually. I enjoy watching Flan when he does that. Yes. It's yeah. good. And the odd toys on strings the usual the usual things yes um, but the idea was to have a few familiar objects that when he got on the boat would he realize um, were you know he, he knows them so and he knows where home is settled. because his things are here as well thank you very much for watching this video and thank you to my subscribers if you're new to the channel please consider liking subscribing and sharing this video um, we will be putting out a couple more videos based on Peter's last three years. It's been a fascinating journey. So last week's, in case you didn't see it, was the thought processes up to the point where Peter bought the boat. This week, as you've just watched, is about the interior and making it comfortable. Next week, we will be talking about the exterior of the boat and the things that Peter has added to enhance its appearance and general style um, so until next week and next week's video yes. bye, bye, bye.